So while we are waiting for Mark Stiles to come on board, uh, and he and I will be able to chat, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about who is our guest tonight. We have a remarkable guest who is going to be talking about his new book that has just come out about the Boston Gentleman's Mob, about a remarkable event in history. Josh S. Cutler is an attorney and state legislator representing the 6th Plymouth District of Massachusetts. He currently serves as House Chair of the Joint Committee on Labor and Workforce Development. A former newspaper editor, Cutler is a graduate of Skidmore College, Suffolk Law School, and the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth, Massachusetts Environmental Policy. He is also the author of Mob Town Massacre, Alexander Hansen and the Baltimore Newspaper War of 1812, History Press 2019, when he's not hot on the trail of 19th century abolitionist firebrands or federalist agitators, Cutler enjoys photography, traveling, hiking, and spending time with his children. Representative Cutler, welcome to the Dr. Joe Show. Good evening. It's great to be here. Thank you, Dr. Joe. I haven't, I haven't seen you with the beard lately, so that, that's uh, uh, looking good. <laughs> you know, what do you think? This is the COVID look, my COVID, COVID look. look. Yes. I, I, I haven't Seriously. had a haircut, haven't had a haircut since COVID. So for those of you who- Oh my, okay. Yes. I, we, this doesn't show on radio, but uh, that's a- Doesn't show, doesn't show. So um, Mark Stahl is, is, is gonna be coming on, but so I, I just wanted to talk to you. First of all, thank you so much for coming on. Um, and what a fascinating book. How, how did you decide to write this book? Wanna just tell our listeners a little bit about it? Absolutely, thank you. Uh, well, thanks for, thanks for having me on. And thanks to listeners out there for, for tuning in. Uh, and it's funny, you mentioned February 19th. Um, my first book actually came out February 19th of 2019. So it is a good I, day to be uh, doing books. And yeah. uh, so I wish you continued success with that. That's a, a great news. Uh, but yeah, the first book I did came out a couple of years ago, and uh, it sort of led me to this project. I'm someone who, uh, you know, history is not my profession, but it's a, it's a hobby of mine, and I enjoy kind of learning and diving into moments in time in, in history that have had, you know, kind of a, a momentous impact that ripple throughout history, and uh, kind of learning more about them. And, and that was what drew me to the first project I did a couple of years ago uh, about a gentleman named Alexander Hansen, who is the the namesake for the town of Hanson here on the South Shore. We may have some listeners huh. from Hanson. And um, he was a, a newspaper publisher circa uh, 1812, who was very uh, passionate against the War of 1812. And he um, upset some folks in the city of Baltimore. And they came and, uh, and tried to burn down his, his printing press in his office. And he fought back. Uh, and uh, one thing led to another. And it had you know a, a pretty a significant uh, impact on the the course of the war and the Federalist Party and, 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 and certainly Alexander Hansen himself uh, and later became uh, the namesake, as I said, for, for this, the town of Hansen here. So uh, that led me to the, the new project, which uh, just come out, uh, uh, the Boston Gentleman's Mob, Maria Chapman and the Abolition, Abolition Riot of 1835. It's a, it's a lengthy title, but there's a lot going on. And um, essentially, Joe, this is a, a story about a moment in time in 1835 right here in Boston. Uh, and it kind of took place in our backyard. And it was uh, what, what, what's been become known as the gentleman's riot, the gentleman's mob. Uh, and it was essentially um, a, a reaction to a growing abolitionist movement here in, in Boston and throughout uh, the Northeast uh, in opposition to slavery. And, you know, we have this sort of assumption that Boston was always this bastion of, of abolitionist uh, uh, support. And that wasn't always the case. And, uh, mm -hmm. and at the time in Boston, the sort of establishment was very, uh, very much uh, anti-abolitionist. They, they felt the abolitionists were, were um, you know, uh, endangering the union and, and could cause uh, them heartaches with their Southern trade partners. And so they, they, uh, they weren't in favor of these, these abolitionists. And, uh, and there was a riot that took place in the streets of Boston involving William Lloyd Garrison, who many, many folks um, may be familiar with. And, um, and so, uh, you know, one thing led to another, and this uh, gentleman's mob had a had a significant impact on the city of Boston and, the, and really the, the the whole trajectory of the abolitionist movement in in, in the Massachusetts and really across the country. So, it was a moment in time that I thought was kind of a really neat story to tell, and uh, really I've enjoyed kind of diving into this topic and telling the story, and, and hopefully now sharing it with uh, uh, listeners and, and and readers. I mean, it's it's 
the, the detail that you have in this book is remarkable. Um, how on earth did you, did you research this? Well, you know, it's uh, the nice thing. Is, so my, I always, I joke, my, my knowledge is deep, but not wide. Uh, so if you ask me, I can tell you the weather on, on August 21st of 1835, uh, but I, <laughs> I, I couldn't probably tell you what happened, you know, five years later. Um, but, you know, it, we're really fortunate. There's so many resources out there. You know, the Boston Public Library is, is a fantastic resource. They have a treasure trove of original letters. I mean, back then, you know, people wrote letters all the time. We don't really sort of a lost art these days. Uh, but people wrote letters all the time, and that you know really helps to illuminate and and, and reveal uh, you know what happened in, in, in through history. And you know there are a lot of diaries. Uh, obviously, newspaper accounts were you know we always say that uh, newspaper is sort of the rough first rough first rough draft of history, and that is certainly the case. And so those uh, are, you know those original sources really you know if you look in the right places can really be helpful to 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 tell a story with you know. The level of detail to really make it come alive, which is what I, I, I try to do in my work. Yeah, it, it is. It's in a remarkable story, and it is very detailed. And what's wonderful is that we also have storytellers of our own who can go into remarkable detail about what they are trying to get customers to learn about. And so, speaking of those people, Larry, why don't we take a first commercial break so our sponsors can tell the world about their history. We'll be right back with the Dr. Joe Show. Stretch the canvas, brush with madness, is it sadness or just a show that 